still take our conversation to Kaduna State, where we want to look at the concerns around um, uh, the flooding in the state. Uh, today, our focus will primarily be on uh, evaluating government's intervention in uh, you know uh, the flood concerns. So we're being joined by Malam Usman Mazabu Mazadu, is the Deputy Secretary, Kaduna State Emergency Management Agency. He's joining us via Zoom uh, for us to uh, look at exactly what government is doing as regards um, uh, flooding and emergency uh, concerns in the state. Uh, uh, so good to have you joining us on the program, uh, Malam. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Very well, thank you. We're doing well. We were just hoping that we could have more lights on your face uh, so that um, Nigerians can actually see uh, the man, the man Malam uh, Mazadu. Uh, I wish you, wish you could have more life on your face. However, uh, fantastic. So bring us up to speed. What exactly is the state um, like as regards to the recent flooding? Exactly where, where is Kaduna State right now in the scheme of affairs? Uh, how are the people in Kaduna coping with the recent flooding? Okay, um, good morning. As uh, the earlier mentioned, I have uh, Usman Ayat, by name, the Executive Secretary of the University of the Management Agency, CASEN. Uh, it is very unfortunate, but fortunately for us, as citizens, as an authority of the government, we have been notified by NIME some few months back. And the expected flood from areas the occurrences that is about to happen by prediction. And glory be to God, we communicated to the governor, and the governor did a report. Uh, as preventive uh, as preventive issue, we, we try to first of all understand uh, the issues on ground. And uh, it's not just that, but well, at least there are certain aspects that we can, even if we cannot uh, produce or uh, stop it from me, We'll be able to have a kind of vision or an official arrangement that will make our uh, detail more for the price when we go. So, when we had uh, the notification from NIMET, first preventive measures were taken, which, of course, we identified the flood areas in the state where we sat with all the stakeholders of various communities, which of course not just the 70 local governments, but the seven local governments that NIME tried to make specific uh, notification on. We sat with the stakeholders as an agency. We detailed, we give them detailed information about the flooding of a thing, and at some time, we let the citizens understand the dangers of living close to flood-prone areas. Which, uh, yes, we are new. The government is very, very fresh, but at the same time, it's more like a continuity of the government. So, the, uh, the previous administration have tried its best to make sure that the critical utilities of what we are going to create, that we are, we will be on preventive, not a response. We will be on preventive, not a response. But um, what has happened has happened. The occurrence, the occurrence has uh, happened. So immediately, if you go to all the scheme of the flooding or the flash flood that happened that last week, you will realize you won't see any other person or a Kasema. We were there from the beginning. We were there trying to see how we can rescue or how we can take all our citizens out of the affected areas and move them to their self life centers in the city. So, so far, as a government, as a government, we have been trying extremely, extremely well to see that no life is lost and no property is being destroyed. But uh, you cannot avoid the fact that in the human by nature have their own way of doing things. We cannot um, uh, we cannot fight them like combatant fight. All that we can do is to convince them, let them understand that despite the effort His Excellency has been making to make sure that preventive measures is been put in place. But uh, at the same time, as governor and as someone who promises students, uh, will, will always be covered. 
flexibility shouldn't be an issue of understanding perspective. Security issues is not all about mandatory. Securing lives and properties of our citizens is priority, which of course this not their not of a thing is uh, high aspect that must be considered as an um, emergency security situation. So after the occurrence of the flood, we have a very fast response so as to make an assessment to understand where is the water coming from, that is number one. And number two, to understand for eventually such occurrence is going to happen again in Kaduna, how can we mitigate the situation? To understand if we are reporting His Excellency as the eye of the governor, how can we advise the government so as to make sure we have 100% preventive measures before 2024? Not to mention that because this year, we have flood, this year I'm assisting with almost a different time. So what that we can do now is to put response, response, response. And uh, we make it, let's make it clear. He made it clear to us at our last quarterly briefing that he don't want to hear anything about response. Emergency operation shouldn't be about the new materials. Oh, oh, it should be them. about prevention. We should find ways Absolutely. to make sure we prevent. It, it, it will be a very good place to, to, to come in so that it will be a two-way no, conversation this morning. Again. Malam, I mean, here will be a good place to interject so that it will be a two-way conversation this morning. We're going to play you this report. When we come back, there are two questions that will come to you that I want to imagine that those who reside in your state who desire very clear-cut answers. In just a moment, let's take a look at this report. Oh. Okay, thank you very much. Residents living in natural disaster-prone areas woke up in the early hours to receive an unfriendly ghost taking over their environment. This may not come as a surprise because the Nigerian Meteorological Agency, NIMED, had predicted the impending floods for Hawa, Umar, and others living in the affected areas. The imminent flood, they said, has caused huge setbacks as they appeal for rapid response from the government. I woke up this morning to meet everywhere, even our parlor, our kitchen, everywhere was flooding. So I didn't feel happy about it. The message I have for the government is if they can help us with this. so. By next year, you won't see this type of this type of disaster again. Yesterday morning, the thing started gradually, gradually. So by this morning, if I know where to pass, even inside my house, everywhere was full of water. Even my children cannot go to school. Nobody can go out because of it. Government should try and make a way for us so that this flood, even though the flood is coming. They should just make a way for the water to just pass instead of the water coming inside someone's house. A lot of people have not been sleeping in their home. Like this year was even quick. It was just within three days. Last year was like three weeks. So if the government can step in for people, we really appreciate a lot. We know the drainage and the river is closed, but there are still ways to help because a lot of people live down here. Executive Secretary of the Cardinal State Emergency Management Agency, Usman Hayatu, in a press briefing said some of the residents living in the flood prone territories have proven to be uncooperative by not hitting early warning signs. I was in media, I, w I went to TV stations, radio stations, even our emergency um, uh, and live uh, unit have been moving around trying to sensitize and let our people understand the dangers associated with um, uh, living too close to Okumalemite erecting structures near um, uh, water banks. But we come to realize that there are structures, there are buildings, houses that are erected without even permission without even approval from Kasubda or any other um, uh, government-related agency. We come to understand that even the people that were compensated by the previous administration are still living in the same structures whom they were compensated to vacate. Amidst all odds, the Kaduna State Emergency Management Agency has assured of a continuous intervention as a means of effectively carrying out their duties while ensuring no life and properties are lost from flood incidents in Kaduna State.
Micah Monday Silver Bed News 24 Thank you, Micah, for that report. Let's come back to you. We just saw uh, what you had to say with regards to how government had synthesized the residents of Kaduna of impending flooding around their areas, but they did not respond. So here are the questions. When the government alerted the people of intended floods, what arrangements were put in place to really get those who you advised to move to higher ground to relocate to? Did government do anything in that regard? Um, you see, as I earlier mentioned, let me take you back to 2022. Before the previous administration started discussing on the issue with regard to flood areas, we, we, as an agency, we constitute stakeholders committee. The stakeholders committee constitutes of uh, Kasubia, Kajis, and all other security and see, of course, with Ministry of Justice. So what the government has done so far is that that um, uh, stakeholders committee was able to first of all meet with residents of the flood uh, flood areas, and secondly try to uh, try to let them understand the dangers associated living close to the flood flood areas. Thirdly, the government try as much as it can to make a tentative arrangement to make a tentative arrangement in a way that yes we agree we agree that they are citizens and we believe that they have entered their structures close to the front areas but of course it was, wasn't given any approval and second we equally agree that those structures are blockages of waterways thirdly we agree that there are some certain buildings that were um, uh, erected within the waterfront area, but we are given approval from one from the agency responsible for approval. So this is what we are from. What is excellency the executive governor came in as a governor? He said security is part of the social agenda. And in order to secure the people, he must he, he must let with the people and let them understand whatever policy he is bringing on board. Of course, he is trying to make sure the government has it by the people. So it should be by the people so as to make sure whatever the government is about to do, it will be with the consent and the consent of the people. First of all, the first the first step that was taken is to make sure we follow the committee reform. We the committee report recommended that over two thousand two hundred and fifty or two hundred and uh, close to three thousand houses must be demolished. And you cannot demolish houses just like that, irrespective of the dangers, without communicating and giving proper awareness to the citizens the residents. Because whether we like it or not, they are our citizens. And yes, they have made a mistake, but at the same time, as a government that, that opened its wings to carry everybody along, the government made three provisions. One, to make sure we provide or allocate a very virgin land for them to move. Two, for those that have encroached some certain meters, we have discussed and we are still having another engagement with them that we will be able to accommodate or to give them any plot of land. Rather, we will be able to compensate them in some instances. When of course in some instances, we are giving them nothing. Rather, we will be responsible for erecting a kind of a fence between the plot area and the property they are living. So people are fully aware of it. And um, I wouldn't say I'm trying to shift the blame on anybody. But what I'm saying is, as a government, there are policies that you can actualize 100%. And of course, there are some policies that without the cooperation of the citizens, no matter how hard it is, no matter how dangerous it is to them, you will be able to enforce 100% on them. But by the grace of God, as um, uh, we discuss, and as I make it very clear, by before next 2024, I'm um, uh, Season in Kaduna State, we will be talking about response. We will be talking about the preventive measures so far put in place. If it will be a war, even if it will be a, making a great area close to the platform areas where we will attract some um, uh, tourists and our people will be completely safe and sound. So, if you go back to this video you just made, you will agree with me that. It's not all about the citizens. It's about Katsema, the agency responsible for it. 
because even the people that are living in the control areas saw our staffs any morning, any hours, trying to look after the drainage, the small, small villages. That was already there was that the people from the country within their, their houses. We are trying to dissenting the drainages, trying to make the water have its own way so as to reduce the tension so far. And um, we make it clear because there are some agitation, some people start even crying that Katsema and my house is affected. Come and give me cement, come and give me blocks, come and give me repetition, come and give me food. I make it clear for them. I said, I am here as the eye of the governor. And the governor make it clear to me that I should not put too much of our effort for the leaf item, for the leaf okay, madam. We should do too much effort, 80% effort on preventive measures. So I tell them, okay. if you are living in that area, you have the state compensation, most of the houses, despite the irregularities that was that took place before you entered the building, but still the people are needed to take compensation to enter the houses. You, you, you encourage government land and you block water weight. So I told them, and I make it clear to them, okay. the assessment we have, we, that we have been, it's okay. not an assessment to give relief materials. Okay, uh, thank it's you. It's an assessment to make sure to bring preventive measures to avoid all this bug flash flood and the natural heavy flood in Kaduna. Okay. Because we wouldn't sit down here Ma thinking about response and. Malam, okay. Uh, although uh, whether the answer is okay by the uh, uh, Kaduna residents, that's another thing entirely. Let's also let you know that if you're in Kaduna State, you can put any question across to your uh, executive secretary of the Kaduna State Emergency Management Agency, Katsema, so that he can, you feel it, so you should know better. We'll put your words out and let's see what goes on. Uh, executive secretary, one of your residents did ask that the state government should channel the, the, the floods through a, a place that would not really hurt them. Is this something on the table, uh, the, the, the governor's uh, table, at this point in time? You see, you see, um, I'm very sorry to say, but uh, there are certain things that are very technical and some things need professional expertise. For an example, if a, if a citizen is talking in the form of his understanding, as we are talking in the form of government who are trying to protect their lives and properties, how can we as a government, or how can anybody channel the entire water passage in a limited short period of time? I wouldn't want to preempt what we are putting in place, but I am telling you and giving you this um, uh, authoritatively that even the world thinks that the government are trying or have started the treatment process is something that cannot be completed within the period of 10 years. So the easiest, the easiest, it's not about, it's not about the government letting the water or the flooding to happen. There is no way you direct a building at the edge of water bank and expect that water not to go into your house. These areas we are talking about, maybe you should go back to that video, those videos. The, the, the houses that were affected are houses less than 300 meters to the Bakaduna water bank. So certain houses were even constructed on top of water channels. Some buildings were erected not very close, but the drainages, the passage of water could come through that place, but people erect structures on it, and water was by this. So what we are saying is, there are immediate response and there are long time ways of prevention. Mm. And the immediate one is, now we are already in September. And already NAMED have given us notification since two months back. And the, the moment we receive the notification, we move around, we identify houses, over 3,000 houses, based on the prediction, will be affected by a flood. And we start with people, and out of these uh, 2,000 right, houses, yes. almost 2,700 houses were, were, were erected illegally without vision approval. Mm. And well, that, 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 that is debatable, Malam. That, that is debatable if, if you have these large numbers of houses that have been erected and um, you say they are without approval. 
is debatable. There have been governments in power over the, over the years that should have questioned or queried all of these or probably correct all, all, all of that. So, but then let's, let's, let's look at, um, you've talked about the, the short-term solutions that you bring into the fore. Uh, I'm sure Nigerians are a lot more interested in long-term, pretty long-term. The deranged you can't do anything about, but the drainages you can do something yeah. about. Uh, 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 yes. building, building structures for the people uh, all in, the, in anticipation of, um, of flooding is something that the government can, can do uh, for the future. So bring us up to speed as we begin to coast home on this conversation. Bring us up to speed. What your government is looking forward to as in the future solution, futuristic uh, solutions, not, not these um, handouts that is being seen. I don't, I don't know why a lot of governments are so excited in wanting to give out handouts. When would have, would have dealt with the issue uh, you know, proactively? We, we, we want to settle for to giving out handouts. That's a big concern going forward. Yeah, so tell us what your government is putting in place for the future. Okay. Thank you very much. And um, on Friday, on Friday this week, we did, uh, we, uh, we are instructed by His Excellency because we have a kind of some little, I cannot say allegation, but I would say a fairly petition from other angle of the state because some citizens, particularly a journalist, was on uh, media making agitation that uh, the, the flood that took place in Kaduna is as a result of some dams or a dam that was happened. So the camera put us on a quick response that how could a dam be opened without the not without any application, not to mention it is even has to be in the law, not to mention putting preventive measures. So in the process of trying to make some inquiry, we 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 were able to have two solutions. One there was no dam. In a serious note, there was no dam that was open. And two, it is clearly put to the government and the population on the ground that there is need for preventive We really want to put preventive measures. We must start it now against next year and future study. Okay, so exactly. We are, we'll be having meeting. I'm coming. We'll be having meeting by 11 a.m. today. Oh. With Nigerian waterways and oh. what that will do today, we will be meeting. We start today by 11:30 in my office. My conference with some of them have arrived already. The, the 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 agenda of the meeting is one: what are the causes for high flood in Kaduna? If we mustn't demolish any building in Kaduna State, what measures should government put in place? To make sure both drainages and even if you cause the government having the world, because what I saw in my table when I came as, as the executive secretary, there was a resolution or there was a project by Chinese and Indian that started some years ago, but the project was abandoned. Okay. How, how have we activate or activate through the Ministry of um, uh, of Disaster Management? Because now we have a Ministry of Disaster Management. Okay. All right, uh, we, we had a caller just a while ago and another one. We do hope that the network really allows us to get one or two calls before we wrap up uh, this segment with the Executive Secretary of the Kaduna uh, SEMA at uh, this point in time. Malam, uh, good to know that you have uh, a short term, uh, you know, uh, medium term and long term plans to protect the people from floods even in future. But some of your residents uh, really are asking, about the ecological fund we know you don't speak for the state government but you take care of what the environment should be like in your state especially where there are emergencies uh so they feel that if governor sunny could deploy some of these funds into ensuring that the drainages work and also pre pre also provide for instance a safety net for those who can be victims should there be any a natural disaster now the people of Kaduna will be seeing into high heavens. So what do, how do you react to that? In any administration, whatever administration, there is process which include budgetary allocation, not to mention any income that will come outside the state either IGR or any other income. And for this administration, everybody will agree with you that in less than 100 days, His Excellency has extremely well. And the issue of finances and other related issues, which are funds, ecological and disaster um, funds, will be channeled 
and uh, globally. And um, I, uh, I will tell you, I will communicate to our citizens who will be at this channel right now that uh, in the first history of SEMA, when we went for our budgetary defense, His Excellency part of the security interest, making sure that everybody did peace. We were able to capture a lot of things, which of course the funding will definitely come from that angle because we believe we still wouldn't be in peace without peaceful stability and the citizens wouldn't be happy and appreciate the government who promise to be at uh, for the state to be free of uh, a history of uh, any disaster and uh, emergency based uh, activities. So for the those funds the citizens should rest assured that everything that have to do with emergency with their life and properties, they should expect and watch to see what is going to happen after the passage of this 2024 project. Everything will be spelled out and everything is already has been spelled within the cycle of the government. So we wouldn't we wouldn't preempt it until after his excellency presented his project to the National Assembly, people will understand that he is a governor yes. that captures all angles of his agenda. All right, uh, Madam Usman uh, Mazado, we'll keep our eyes on Kaduna State and we'll follow um, all that you had promised uh, I, I, to do. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want you to just keep your eye on Kaduna. I want you to come in and help us as strong steel is inspiring our citizens. Of course, to understand that um, His Excellency Mala Ogosan is moving around trying to see how he can bring better to the state and our citizens should know that they are ambassadors of their own self and for the state. So please come in as uh, strong stakeholders as we work closely to see how we sensitize our people and make sure they understand the policies and principles of the government so as to protect their lives and yes. properties. And also, so don't watch from the and also, and also, and also, and also ensure that And also ensure that Katsema is doing all they had promised to do for the people. Thank you so very much, uh, Malam Usman Mazadu, the Executive Secretary, Kaduna State Emergency Management Agency. A pleasure talking with you. Definitely will touch base with you in the nearest future. Do have a great day. Thank you very much. You are most welcome.